I'm Dr. Flanagan. I'm a urologist at the Vancouver General Hospital associated with the University of British Columbia. I'm also the clinical lead for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program Sexual Rehabilitation Clinic. In this video, we want to go over penile injection therapy for erectile dysfunction. Penile injections, otherwise termed intracavernosal injections, ICI, is a treatment for erectile dysfunction that involves injecting a small amount of medication into the erectile tube in the penis. Common medications include Trimix, Bimix, and Prostaglandin. After the injection of the medication, an erection is typically created within 5 to 10 minutes, and once we find the appropriate dose, this lasts between 30 and 60 minutes. The great thing about this treatment for patients with uh, following prostate cancer treatment is that it does not rely on intact nerve function. The medication acts locally within the muscle of the penis, so it does not require a signal uh, for erection by the nerves. Uh, we typically provide teaching for the injection therapy in the clinic by one of our sexual health clinicians and really just go through the steps required to perform the injection safely and some of the education that's required uh, to know around changing the dose as well as the potential risks and complications. Once you're confident and comfortable with this, then we get you to perform the injections at home uh, by yourself or with a partner. So how does the medication work? Well, the medication is delivered into the muscle within the penis by the needle, and it simulates increased oxygenated arterial penile blood flow, and it also works to relax the muscle within the penis. This relaxing of the muscle expands, and it traps that increased blood flow, and as it traps it, it decreases the amount of blood that can leave. As a result, what happens is the penis will expand both length and width and become more rigid, uh, effectively creating an erection. The effect is localized to the penis, so it will not cause effects on the rest of the body in most circumstances. Indications for penile injections include individuals that have tried other forms of erectile uh, dysfunction therapies and either cannot achieve a desired erection or the erections are not firm enough uh, for desired and intended purposes. Also, if you're engaging in penile rehabilitation, then the injections can be very effective in helping to increase blood flow to the penile tissue and increase oxygenation as well as uh, smooth muscle relaxation and exercise. Some of the contraindications or those scenarios that we think injections may not be the best uh, fitted for are individuals that either have limited hand dexterity that you cannot safely put the needle into the penis, or if the eyesight is limited that you cannot visualize the correct dose uh, to draw up of the medication. Similarly, if you have a history of significant bleeding disorder where you get severe bleeding or bruising with needle injections, then uh, we'd recommend that you speak with your prescribing physician regarding uh, the use of intracavernosal injections for you. Now, if we look at how to perform the injection, first thing that I'd recommend is ensuring that you have all of the supplies with you before you begin. This includes the medication that you're going to inject, which is typically stored in the fridge, the needles that you're going to use to inject, alcohol swabs, the yellow sharps disposal container that the pharmacy will give you, injection information package including the dosing chart that our clinic will provide, Sudafed pills in case of a prolonged erection, and uh, also of note, it's helpful to use a flat surface to place all of these supplies on, whether that's a night table in your bedroom or a countertop in your bathroom nearby. So when we go to perform the injections, I like breaking this down into three steps. One, prepare the medication. Two, prepare the penis to receive the medication. And three, deliver the injection. Okay, so we have all of our supplies that we need here. We have our medication that was recently refrigerated and was just taken out. We have our alcohol swabs here. We have our injection needle here. And we're going to be using this uh, penile model to do the injection on here today. So <clears throat> we'll first start off with the needle. This is a typical needle that is used for penile injection therapy. Here is a safety cap that you can pull off and discard of appropriately. This is the plunger the syringe, 
and then under this orange cap is the needle. The needle is pretty small and it's quite sharp. Now the important thing to know is if the needle touches anything outside the inside of this cap then it's contaminated and it should be thrown away. So if it touches the table, the outside of this cap, or skin that has not been prepared, we'd recommend throwing it away. Now if you go to recap, there's a few different ways to do it. You can just try to do it freehand like this, however it can be somewhat challenging, especially if you have a small amount of tremor. Sometimes a strategy might be to touch your hands together, which will stabilize the right and the left hand and make it easier. Another uh, option to make it easier is to put your hands on the table and recap it like this. And the final way is there's a flat surface on this cap that you can place onto the table using your dominant hand. You can guide it in and press down like that. This is probably the safest way so you don't poke yourself with the needle. Now if we look specifically at the syringe to understand the dosing, there's numbers that go up by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way to 100. Now 100 units is the equivalent of one milliliter. The dose that we will typically start most individuals on is about five units. Now if we look at the small scale here, we see that each big line is approximately 10 units and each small hash is two units. We measure to the top of this black plunger so if we want to measure five units, it would approximately be there. Okay, so it's a very small amount of medication that you're going to be using for the first injection. So now that we understand how this works, we can then go at preparing the medication. <clears throat> so we have our flat surface here. We have our vial of medication. It usually comes with a plastic cap that you can just pop off like this. Now in the middle, there is a rubber uh, target in the middle, and this is where you're going to be placing the needle through. You always confirm that the medication uh, that you think you're injecting is actually what's written on the bottle. Next, I'd recommend taking an alcohol swab. You can tear this open and take it out. Anytime the needle is going to pass through rubber or pass through skin, there should be an alcohol swab that's applied. So I'd recommend swabbing this and of course before we've started all of this we've washed our hands okay so the alcohol swab is down now we remove the cap again we can place it down in preparation once we have the uh, medication in the syringe because most of the vials are glass you have to introduce the same amount of air into the vial as the amount of medication you're planning on taking out. Otherwise, it will create a vacuum. So here we have approximately five units of air that I'm going to place into the vial. So using my dominant hand, I puncture the rubber all the way in, and I inject the air in. Now, because the air comes to the top and the fluid's at the bottom, we need to turn this entire system upside down. Now the air is at the top and the water is at the bottom near the syringe. So we're going to draw back. I usually like drawing a little bit more than the dose I'm interested in and I push it all back in again, trying to get a small air bubble out. Again, we'll draw back just past the five units, so I'm at approximately six to seven units. Now I'm gonna push it in just to the dose I'm requiring, five units. There's a very tiny air bubble there that won't be significant for the injection, but if there is a larger air bubble, then we'd absolutely want to get rid of this first. Now that I have my medication dose, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to put the vial down. Now I'm going to recap this carefully. Again, making sure to pay attention not to touch anything else on the outside of the lid. Okay, so now it is recapped, our medication is ready. Now for phase two is preparing the skin site for injection. I'd use a new alcohol swab pad and we want to perform the injection <clears throat> on either the 10 o'clock or two o'clock position of the penile shaft. Now essentially anywhere between the base 
and the outer part of the shaft is okay to inject. I would not recommend injecting it to the glands. One, it won't work, and two, it will be uncomfortable. The structures that we're trying to avoid are the nerves and the vessels that run on the top of the penis, typically between 11 and 1 o'clock, and the urethra, or the P-channel, which is on the bottom of the penis. So anywhere in between, between the 2 o'clock and um, 3 o'clock, or 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, is the best location to put it in. So if you're right hand dominant, I'd recommend uh, cleaning the right side of the penile shaft. You're going to use your left hand to secure and grasp the penis, and you're going to use the right hand to do the injection. Alternatively, if I was left-handed, I would clean the left side of the penile shaft, and I'd use my right hand to grab the penis and stabilize it. Okay, so now that we've cleaned the skin in a broad area on the penile shaft, it is now ready uh, to receive the injection. So we'll now move to the third phase of the injection, and that's actually performing the injection. Here, what I'd recommend is removing the cap from the needle and holding the needle. Uh, there's various ways that you can hold it to be effective. The key parts are holding it near the end so you have good control and keeping your finger off of the plunger when you go to poke through the skin. By doing this, this will hopefully prevent any accidental or unintended injection of the medication prior to having it all the way into the cavernosal body. I like holding it with my third and fourth digit here because it frees up my index finger to do the injection. Okay. Now, with respect to holding the penile shaft, I'd recommend grabbing the head of the penis and pulling it straight out or slightly over to the side, which exposes this area for you to see uh, to perform the injection. Now, if you do not have a circumcised penis, I'd recommend pulling the skin back, cleaning the area with the alcohol after you pull the skin back to perform the injection so you know exactly where the head of the penis is. Another way that you can do it is you can squeeze the shaft, which causes this portion to bubble out and present itself and make it easy to target with a needle. Whatever you find is more comfortable. Those are two different strategies that can be very effective. So if I grab the head of the penis and I pull it out away from the body and a little bit to the left, my right hand is ready to inject. Again, this is, almost, this is going to be coming in perpendicular and nearly horizontal. This would be horizontal and, and at the nine o'clock position. And this would be more at the 10 o'clock position. Anywhere in that range is adequate. It can be towards the base, the middle, or near the end, and those are all also adequate. To do the injection through the skin, I'd recommend a quick poke all the way in so you see that the plastic is directly against the skin. Now draw your attention to the plunger. Oftentimes, as you do that, you may drift out with the needle. So as you put your finger on the plunger, I'd look back at the needle and the skin of the penis so you ensure that it's all the way in. Once you identify that it's all the way in, now you can inject all the medication into the penis. You can see the plunger move to the end. Next, you take this out, put it down on a safe surface, and put pressure at the site that you injected. Hold this for approximately 30 seconds to prevent any bleeding or bruising. Once this is done, you can massage the medication into the penis, although it's not absolutely necessary. This is going to take five to 10 minutes to take effect. In the meantime, you can clean up your supplies. You're going to recap your needle and dispose of this in the yellow uh, sharps container that the pharmacy provided for you. Once this container is approximately two thirds or three quarters full, you can bring it back to the pharmacy and they'll dispose of it properly for you. With respect to dosing, the goal of penile injection therapy is to gain an erection that's adequate for sexual activity that you wish to engage in. We recommend limiting rigid erections to 60 minutes or less. Dose adjustments in our program are guided by a dosing chart 
provided with your prescription and information package. If you have questions or concerns, please consult your sexual health clinician and do not aggressively increase dose beyond our parameters as it may place you at risk for a prolonged erection called priapism. Priapism is an erection that lasts too long. There's a small risk of having priapism with these injections, uh, which is the erection that lasts for four hours or more following the therapy. To prevent priapism, we'd recommend not taking more medication than the dose prescribed. Do not combine with any other erectile dysfunction medications, such as PD-5 inhibitors like Viagra, Cialis, or Levitra, and limiting to one injection per 24 hours. If you do develop priapism, after one hour, we recommend attempt to have a climax, gentle physical activity or a cold shower until the erection goes away. If it's still there at two hours, we'd recommend taking four 30 milligram tablets of Sudafed or 120 milligram dose, which will often help make the erection go away. But if by three hours you still have a rigid erection that's not going away, we'd recommend that you proceed to the local emergency department and notify them that you're on the injection protocol and that you're presenting with priapism. An erection lasting longer than four hours is a medical emergency and could result in penile muscle damage and future risk of further decline of erectile function. Just want to take this opportunity to thank all of our supporters for the Prostate Cancer Supportive Care Program. The Specialist Services Committee provided funding to help us initiate this program in January of 2013. And more recently, the Ministry of Health has provided funding in 2017 that allowed for the provincial expansion of our program uh, to reach more British Columbians uh, with sexual dysfunction and survivorship issues following prostate cancer. I would also like to acknowledge all of the other agencies that have supported our program throughout the years, as well as the individuals and families that have provided generous philanthropic support. If you'd like to look more into our program or connect with us, here are our contact details, uh, including our uh, email, website, Twitter, and Facebook programs. Thank you.